in this big time matchup, then they're in a much better spot to actually pull off this 2-0. Oh, if, if they don't take that 2v2, I mean, obviously they're not going to make it, but it just puts Igor in a better position in my mind. So let's talk about Dignitas. Rich, talk me through this roster. This is an interesting roster, Andrew, one that was maybe a little maligned early on, but has proven they have the capability to perform. The 2v2 of Cody Go and Flash has been really excellent. 2-1 yeah. so far on the season, and don't forget that great five-game sweep set by Flash with the 2v2 and the King of the Hill sweep. The big in interesting part here has been their 1v1 with Bale getting moved out, the rookie coming from Orange Crown League and being replaced with a more experienced player at this level, Lince who um, probably might be one of the more underrated players out of the entire Latin American scene when it comes to high-level competitive play. And he's shown that with some good performances in CRL overall. The big question, though, is can they win one set against Team Liquid? Yeah, and Team Liquid is going to make it very, very tough. Everyone on this roster, a superstar of their own right. Diego B, Canario, Surgical Goblin, and of course the sophomore Igor who made that big-time debut at World Finals, has been playing pretty well. You know, he, he struggled against Jupiter and Pedro, but I feel like everyone would struggle against Jupiter and Pedro, and he 2 owed to Anaban. So a very interesting season so far for Igor. You add a King of the Hill sweep there, and it shows that he's still a top dog when it comes to head-to-head -to -head play, but it's all about the 2v2, and it feels like it's going to be Surge and Canario again. However, like we said at the beginning of the season, it was Diego B and Canario. Yeah, they've gone back and forth with it, and that's throughout the last couple of seasons, too. They did that in 2019 in the spring and the fall as well. So it, uh, here we go. It's going to yeah. be Canario and Surgical Goblin, as you were saying. And it's interesting. Look, if, if I, I think that if Liquid wins this 2v2, they probably win the overall match. Yes. You know, Lince is a, Lince is a great player. Igor is a tough out. If they win this 2v2, I think Igor can get it done. But obviously at the start here at the first set. Yeah, and, and what's really crazy about their 2v2 squad is, you know, they 2 0 Cream, they 2 0 Chivas, and then they got 0 2'd by Tribe. So they're definitely a top tier squad that feels like they're just not quite getting the recognition they deserve. However, Flash and Cody Go have played very, very well. So this is the most important 2v2 set that these four have played this season. Let's go. Diego, our Surgical Goblin and Canario, top of your screen. Cody Go and Flash at the bottom. So it's going to be double bait. Yeah, this is for just Dignitas. a dominant, dominant win condition archetype in 2v2. I mean, I saw Trainer Luis tweet about it yesterday. It's just so strong right now. And a double NATO ban also makes things a little interesting here. Yeah, you can imagine. So the big you'll question see... is... Oh, go ahead. That's the big question is what are all the pieces they have here, right? I mean, they have the log, they have the snowball. A heal spear can help with those skeleton barrels a little bit, but what are the pieces they have for, as we talked about yesterday, that third and fourth piece of bait coming in? Yeah, exactly. It's going to be all about figuring that out. I mean, you see both of those, uh, you, mean see, you see Tornado Band on both sides of the board, and that's exactly what you have to start thinking about, Rich, is what other small spells can I use? And right now, Cody going Flash are just out to a commanding lead. We've only seen Snowball, Log, and Heal Spirit as great, uh, you know, bait answers, and they're not really working out right now. Giant Skeleton going to go nowhere. Log pretty easy to hold off. And yeah, Andrew, you're talking about those lack of answers. We'll see what happens when we start getting a little bit deeper into this. If Surgical Goblin and Canario can put some significant pressure on this really talented duo that so, so far has shown a solid 2v2 outing. And in particular, Cody Go. He's been on it in 2v2 this entire 2020, really leading the Colombian side to the top four at No-Tilt Worlds and continue to perform well here in CRL West. So what's going to be really interesting about these pushes for Canario and Surgical Goblin is you're going to get that Mega Knight high to meet with the Giant Skeleton, obviously get a little bit of splash damage, maybe luckily, hopefully, get it on top of the Hog Rider as well. But how do you get around the Mega Knight, the Inferno Tower, and the, uh, excuse me, and the uh, Log, the knockback from the Log, all of that getting the Hog to Tower once we're deep into Double Elixir and Triple Elixir? Barrel in on the right-hand side. Log takes care of business fairly easily, but that's round number one. What happens when round number two comes in? Yep. Snowball might be no. They go for a double drop of troops, but still a little bit of damage on the right-hand side. And you understand the double drop. They want to get a counter push coming in, but they're also giving massive spell value now. So they see that this push on the right is going to die, so they have to go to the left. 
Although that rage should help a little bit. Yeah. Maybe that's the answer. And the freeze. Pause, freeze, rage. Oh my word. Tower going to go down on the left hand side. We have a tight game here with 20 seconds left. You love it. They held it for as long as possible. Very, very patient. Now they have the responses they need. Here's the second wave. Where's the snowball? There it is. No final big spell. That poison was it. Yeah. So how fast can Cody go on flash, get back around, and get something on tower? They're not going to do it. Surgical Goblin and Canario going to battle for one. Now, Andrew, looking at that, those last two decks, think about it, that double bait deck is very much a single lane deck. Mm -hmm. And Surge and Canario, the one advantage they did have was the ability to put pressure in both lanes to really switch it up. And we saw the value of that there in those final moments. You know, it's interesting because we've seen double bait. Uh, you know, they still focus on one tower, but they do a lot of dual lane pressure, right? Because it starts making your opponents make mistakes defensively, maybe not having the correct answers in cycle for those, you know, Skelly Barrel plus Goblin Barrel pushes in opposite lanes. But they didn't really do that. They kind of just kept going in the same lane. And you saw at the end, Surge and Canario were like, we've got your offense figured out. We'll defend it easily. Oh, a missed snowball. Oh. Yeah. Unbelievable. Triple the missed drop. snowball pushes it forward. Yeah. So, you know, you just said Quick. they've got a little bit of wiggle room, Rich. It's one game per set, and that's it. And that's absolutely it. Although this giant skeleton might be able to get there if they get a little bit lucky. Yeah. Log trying to knock it back, and here we go. So, tower down on one side, giant skeleton baby dragon on the other. Haymakers in both parts of the board. And now you see a Hog Rider come down with no elixir in the hand of Cody going flash. So they definitely heavily overspent on that offensive push to take the tower from Surge and Canario, but Surge and Canario recognize it and deliver a massive response. That might be some of the, the, the craziest 45 seconds of gameplay we've seen in a while, Andrew. Opening tower down, and it all started with the missed snowball. You gotta wonder for a second if maybe the snowball doesn't miss if Surge and Canario are up a tower as opposed to just up some damage. Yeah, you know, it, that is a very, very good point you make, but it's a lot of damage that they're up already. And you know exactly where the balloon's going to go every single time. It's going to go for that Princess Tower. I can't imagine Diego, uh, I mean, excuse me, Cody Go and Flash go for the King Tower in this moment. Here comes the freeze, not ranged up. Lumberjack's still, still alive, so maybe the Lumberjack not dying as quickly as they would have hoped for Dignitas, and now a counter push coming in with the Giant Skeleton, Lumberjack, Heal Spirit, Hog Rider, all the opposite direction. All of it. Lumberjack, although is not taking for the Princess Tower, it's getting hit by the King. Hog Rider, very, very protected. There's the Rage. Hog, get one swing in. Man, that Lumberjack for Dignitas just wouldn't die. If it had gone down a bit earlier, that balloon probably connects the tower all raged up. Instead, the balloon just kind of ran around the board trying to get some work done. Yeah. And a freeze comes and in. But it didn't get the Musketeer, Andrew. So the Balloon yep. going to only get maybe death damage if they're lucky. No, outside of the range, everything going wrong for Dig here in these final moments. Yeah, Surge and Canario, they pull the trigger on their own defensive freeze. It pays off very, very well. Now you see the Giant Skeleton in the pocket to meet that Goblin Hut. Hog Rider may get a swing. Yes, it does. Mega Knight, Lumberjack, Brawler. Can they make enough room? Giant Skeleton just holding everything together. Yeah. Miner to the back, get some aggro. And look at that freeze. It's a high freeze, so the balloon stays in the Giant Skelly Bomb. Really, really nice play there by Liquid, and they have enough Elixir to respond to this Mega Knight. Surge and Canario doing exactly what we're used to. They're very, very low, yes. though, Andrew, right now. Flash and Cody go putting oh! the pressure on. Can the balloon get there? Skellies aren't going to do it. Inferno Tower comes down just in time. Wow. Very, very well played. Just enough elixir in the very last moment. Surge and Canario hanging on by a thread, but in a massive damage lead. 1348 to 470. Log gets some of the spell cycle in. Needs to defend this Hog Rider as well. Mega Knight doesn't quite push the Hog Rider back. Doesn't get a shot. It does. That's going to be it. Yeah. Poison will come in. GG well played. Team Liquid takes the 2v2 and the bridge. So let's go on to the 1v1 set. Dignitas versus Liquid. Lince versus Igor. Can the Russian get it done for Liquid and be the hero once again for the boys in blue with everything on the line? So here we go. Lince bottom of your screen. Gives a good luck. Igor at the top. Silent. Ready to go. That sounds about right for Igor. It really does. <laughs> A man of few words except Mortar God. Mortar God. And then a little smile. Oh boy. 
Igor with archers to open up. And a knight. Interesting, interesting, interesting. First 40 seconds away, both players going a little bit faster with their cycle. No big surprises here, at least on Igor's side. And Igor just leaking right now, trying to see what his opponent's going to do. First minute away, and no one's really made a, a strong attempt at creating any significant offense. We'll see if Igor chooses to protect this Inferno Dragon and turn it into anything over at 8 Elixir now. Yeah, I mean, that Brawler's going to demand something out of it. The Inferno Dragon's still going to be very healthy, and it shouldn't cross the river for this Barbarian. So maybe going to need a little bit more is Lince here, and there's the Graveyard coming down. Tanking for the Graveyard is the Inferno Dragon. Poison will go on the Musketeer. Mm -hmm. Not a ton of damage out of that, but a slight, slight Elixir lead by about a half an Elixir right now for the Team Liquid 1v1 player. Yeah, and he takes out the Musketeer, gets damage on the tower. Cycle is back around. He's got his cheap cards back in his hand uh, and his defensive card back in his hand. So really, really nicely played there by Igor. And Lince maybe trying to fix his cycle just a little bit right now. Igor clearly known as one of the top ladder players in the game. Five-time number one on ladder, 25 top 10 finishes, and of course, one global tournament championship as well, number one in the second ever global tournament. Not to mention, the first, I believe, this could be wrong, but I believe the first player to ever hit 8K. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't remember if he was or not, but you know, you talk about those guys that consistently can perform at the very, very top of ladder. And I remember when Igor joined the league, he said, ladder's too easy, got to go to CRL. And, uh, and then he had his <laughs> debut at World Finals. So <laughs> a little bit of trash talk, but he totally backed it up. So both lanes now yeah. in pressure, have to defend the graveyard left-hand side, but a brawler Inferno Dragon on the right-hand side. Lince in a little bit of trouble here as we get into the final 30 seconds of regulation. And a really nice bar barrel there, but that Brawler's on tower, as is the Inferno Dragon. Great amount of damage on the right-hand side, and now Igor can pick and choose where he wants to land his blows. And this Goblin Brawler has been doing a fairly good job of acting as a little mini tank yeah. throughout the game. Good timing from Igor on when he chooses to cycle those Brawlers and then cycle cards behind him. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing about the Brawler is with that boost in damage, it becomes a card you just cannot ignore. You can't eat the damage, even if it's on your healthier tower side. He can add up so much DPS so quickly uh, that demands a response. A very aggressive graveyard push out of Lince, but plenty of Elixir to handle it from Igor. Skeletons to worry about the Knight but a poison again on this Musketeer. Yeah. This is a big chunk of the right-hand side, Andrew. Yeah, that's a huge poison. You get the Barb, you get the Musketeer off the board, and look at that Dark Prince, very, very low in health, not gonna demand a response other than Skeletons. You know, it will get that charge in because it had just enough health, but a great poison in from Igor, and a massive lead for Team Liquid. Final minute, 15. Musketeer, Baby Dragon trying to set the line high. Skelly's to help out. No tank across for the graveyard. Again, the poison on the Musketeer. Yeah. That's been the name of the game for Igor the entire way through. But two Baby Dragons going the opposite direction for Lidze. Yeah, those poisons really getting a ton of value. Talk about the Musketeer. It gets the barb every single time as well. That's a positive trade and damage on the tower. So Lidze, Lidze now making a case for himself, though. But not enough elixir for the graveyard, Andrew. Pressure, pressure, yeah. pressure. Question is, can he get the pressure actually on tower? So far, decent Miss defense, although that Musketeer going to town on the right-hand side. Yeah, I mean, Lince recognizing he's got the beefier deck. If he cannot, if Igor can't get the cards he needs back around in the night and the Goblin Cage, Lince taking advantage, but Igor going to close things out. Will the last skeleton get on oh! tower? It hasn't yet. 53 HP. Poison ticking away. Graveyard trying to steal it back. Who's going to win the foot race here? 29 HP. Can the skeleton get there? Side. Time Igor gets it! Now is the moment. Igor looking to close things out against Dignitas Lince, trying to stay alive. And you got to wonder if how, like, how Lince is feeling right now after that one, too, knowing that really in that final moment, he probably, it was just, a, it was a roll of the dice, and he probably should have or could have taken that one in the final seconds. Got to be feeling real frustrated. So how well has he regrouped for this final game, potential final game? Yeah, you know, uh, we'd gotten a DM on Twitter about someone asking what min-maxing was and what RNG was. We talked about min-maxing before, but RNG is just a term used for random number generator, and that's kind of the way graveyard works, right? You, you cast a spell and you hope for the best. 
Yeah, Graveyard doesn't... Graveyard used to be much more random in its distribution of skeletons. That uh, distribution was uh, was made less random. It was made a little bit more clear. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say about 18 months to two years ago, yep. they reduced the amount of random randomness in the spawning of the skeletons. But there still is just the slightest bit of randomness in how those skeletons come out. It's not precisely predictable. And that little bit of unpredictability leads to things like what you just saw. Yeah, where you're just like, just get on the tower, man! You're right there! So 3M for Igor, and a very aggressive opening for 3M for Igor as well. Yeah, and he's going to cycle it again here. He's going to keep getting those fireballs out if the elixir's in hand from Lince. There it is. And Lince running triple spell, so... Going to be able to do that to two of those Musketeers pretty consistently. And Royal Hogs come out now from Igor. Fireball out, cycle, and a Miner comes in. That Miner is not going to be enough. Log and Skellies, though, are helping out a decent amount, so could have been a whole lot worse on the left-hand side, but as we go into double Elixir, it is Lince with a slight lead set up for the right-hand lane push. Yeah, and this feels like the moment where Lince puts down the tank in front and starts to go to town. Maybe high here to pull? Yep. So let's the Night Witch go do her thing on that side, and... Mm. A really nice zap fireball. Very heads up, very quick response there from Lince to take those three Musketeers off the board. And you're still getting a plus three Yeah, trade. but with the, at, the, at, at the sacrifice of the King Tower activation, Andrew, which... Yeah. You know, you're trying if you're trying to get Miner Chip out of this, which maybe he's deciding the Miner's going to primarily be defensive and that the Giant's tanky enough to do its damage with the King Tower activation, but, you know, yeah, that King Tower activation, definitely not what you love to have in that situation. Yeah, definitely not what you love to happen. I think the idea there for Lean says he's thinking, I can still protect my Miner if the Giant's on the tower, but the problem is right now is he's having a lot of trouble getting on offense with these relentless assaults from Igor. Down to 18.26 on the left-hand side. Igor with the lead with a minute 50 left, and Lince setting up Giant into his lower tower. Yeah, and that feels like the exact correct move for Lince to do. He was at 10 Elixir. No reason to cycle that Miner into the tower. Get the Giant back, see if you can build a push now that you have a bit of an advantage. Pass wants to save that big spell for the big moment. Yep. And a second Giant comes down. So a very, very nice sequence here put together by Lince. And now does get the Fireball Zap out, spending a lot to try to make this push work out. The question is, can that happen? That's a good placement on the Miner to pull the Banda and the Hunter, but not much damage out of all that. No, and a really, really nice high Royal Ghost to clean that stuff up. You get an Ice Golem up front, Royal Hogs behind, and this is a big push by Lince. I mean, excuse me, a big push for Lince to deal with. And that Bandit does dash on top of it. So here we go, final minute, Triple Elixir. Igor, 3M Royal Hogs, putting the pressure on, has moved away mostly from the three Musketeers at this stage, and now just playing Royal Hog Cycle primarily. The question is, can he stay ahead long enough? And there we go, three Musketeers in the back, two to the left, one to the right. Yeah, and this is a tough thing for Lince to fireball. You know, he wants to get more value out of these fireballs than just those two Musketeers, so he's going to go for it, though. But a lot's going to get dropped at the river, and he has so much splash damage. And by he, I'm talking about Igor. You talk about the Royal Ghost, and of course, that Hunter in the back with the Royal Delivery. Two Night Witches trying to find some way for those bats to fly on through, but like you said, too much splash damage. Ewiz and Skelly's trying to stop more in from coming. And now you go three Musketeers all going that same direction. So that's an easy six for nine right yeah. there for Lince. But can he put enough damage on? Miner goes to the inside. Nice pickup by the mus uh, by the Bandit. Fireball in. Ooh, I don't know about that fireball. Oh my word! 10-29, Igor just loses the game. The fireball landed in time. For all of Dignitas, however, Igor, if he loses this, yes, they'll go on to King of the Hill, but Liquid is out of playoff contention. Best of one for playoffs. Let's see what you got. Could they be going the same direction again, Andrew? Let's see. Night Witch is out with the Miner. It feels very, very likely for Lince. And now you see the Bandit and the Royal Ghost from Igor. Maybe we see a rematch in game two. Run it back. Let's yep. go. I mean, when you lose by 22 HP, that's literally one interaction that didn't go your way. So both of these guys thinking, look, it went well in game two, let's run it back, I can capitalize this time. 
Log takes the heal spirit off. Skellies will help with that defense. Zap as well and again, on the big thing, Yeah, the big thing to watch out for here is, like we just saw at the end of that last game, the Igor doesn't have a way to make direct damage on tower. Yep. So he needs to get enough of an advantage early. He's not going to win that spell cycle fight at the end. Yeah, and I'm curious to see what Igor does with his three musketeers in this game. Do we see him cycle him in the back more often so that one can get across the river, and then that one you support with the Royal Hogs, or will we see things like this where he plays him higher? Well, he wants to keep that spell damage off tower. So doing something like that here, and of course last time that before King Tower baited out a, a King Tower activation, which might have played a role in some of those final moments as well. I mean, left-hand side doesn't do a lot of defense there, and both the Musketeers connect, and now Igor goes back on offense with the Heal Spirit plus the Night Witch. No log in cycle, so Heal Spirit connects, and this is most likely going to be close to tower down. That's an insane amount of damage on the left-hand side. 150 in Lince. I mean, he needs to wake up, driving asleep at the wheel at the moment. Yeah, so he goes back on offense here. Night Witch is going to get kited away, and a high Hunter. Miner goes on top of the Hunter, but it goes to the front of the Hunter. Oh no, excuse me, the side. Miner stays perfectly healthy, very well played. And there you go, Hunter off the board. So this is our picture, with 48 seconds left in regulation. That left-hand side tower in trouble, but no big spell, no spell at all to create deck, uh, direct damage for Igor, so he has to break on through. Yeah. Lince with dual lane pressure, but way behind. Yeah, this is, this is tough. I mean, we've seen Lince battle back in both of the games that we've seen so far in this set, but a lot of uphill battles coming his way in this next 23 seconds. Yeah, it's going to be hard to keep damage off tower. Of course, he has the pieces to do it. So he cycles the Night Witch left, knowing that he needs as much as he can to clog up that lane. You might even see him ignore this Royal Ghost on the on the right-hand side for a minute, Andrew. He totally can. And just try to double down on the left. Yeah, maybe Skelly's behind to mitigate some damage. No, he goes all out on the left-hand side. Miner now on the tower. Igor in trouble. Bats up high. Ewiz comes down. Is there another spell to stop these piggies? The log just barely holds on. Lince, very Both low. Bandits. bandits about to dash a tower. Miner picks up. Uh, Royal Ghost trying to get on tower as well. Oh my word, can he stop the he